Well, why don't you turn and find a neighbor and pray the blessings of God upon their life. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Come on, it's been opened up to the church. You don't have to die in your sins any longer. Salvation has been made available to us all. All you got to do is get up out of that grave. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and worship God. We're getting ready to sing another, but before we do, we're going to go to God in prayer. It's pretty much for all the good folk unable to make it. As you can tell, there's some empty spots, and that means there's people out. Because when everybody's here, it's packed. And uh, we have some that are working, some are out of town, and some are sick and need a touch in their body. Amen. We're praying for our brother, elder brother and sister Sweat and need a touch in their body. His, his health is just deteriorating, and they both need a touch. We're praying for them today. Brother Taco and Sister Jeannie, Brother Taco's in the hospital. He'll be having surgery either late this afternoon or early in the morning. And uh, was the last that I heard. He has a, a blockage in his small intestines, and so they have to cut him open and, and do what they got to do. I don't know what all that entails, but I told him we're going to be praying for him. Amen. Let's pray for all the other needs and those that are in the hospitals, those who are in rehab. Brother Young, let's remember him. Amen. Sister Janice, praying for her. Amen. Brother Busby, all of our elders, ask God to touch and bless each and every one of them. Praying for revival, a harvest of souls. Needs a lot of prayer. Let's pray for that this morning. I know there are many others. If we have a need, we'll signify it by the uplifting of the hand. Why don't we bring these to the Lord?
this morning so happy that you are here we want you to make yourself at home and worship the Lord with us indeed God is worthy to be praised amen the ushers are making their way up and getting ready to wait upon you don't forget October the 1st uh, on that Sunday morning uh, what is what is y'all's prayer 8 30 a.m. 8 at 8 a.m. the ladies have a prayer breakfast it's going to be in the, uh, the town rec hall. Sister Hutto will be speaking to the ladies that day. And I know you guys are going to have a great time, going to eat breakfast, have a great prayer breakfast. And I look forward to that. Immediately following this service, we don't want anybody to leave. There are food trucks that will be outside waiting on you. Just go out there and get you, buy you something to eat. Now, if you're here and you uh, happen to be running a little short, that's no problem. Don't worry about that a bit. If you'll go over here to the where the youth are set up, you ain't in Pentecost, the youth will be selling food, and you just tell them, put that on Brother Hutto's tab. I promise you, you may be having to buy mine next time. I don't mind doing it again. I'd rather have your fellowship and your money any day of the week. We want everybody to stay and eat with us and fellowship with us, and we're going to have a great time. On Camouflage Sunday, in honor of the first of, of fall, we're here right at fall, and hunting season opens up this coming up weekend, and, and I know all these hunters are excited about it, and uh, some of these wannabe hunters are excited about it. Amen. I, I'm, I'm in one of the wannabes, praise the Lord. But anyway, uh, God is good. If you brought at least five guests, raise your hand. All right, we got one right here, Sister Adrian. Amen. Come here, one of you guys. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Get that Sister Adrian back there. Amen. She wins the $100 today for bringing the most guests. Job 22 and 27 said, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. So upon the authority and by the orders of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Press down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing. There's not room enough to receive it. I have opened my hand to give. So now I can receive all of your blessings that you have provided for the givers. I shall be blessed coming in. I shall be blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. I decree that my whole family shall be saved, walking with God, living in perfect health, and enjoying your abundant blessings, Lord. We decree this as we stand on your word, that we should prosper even as our soul doth prosper. Amen. And it is so. Let's worship the Lord in heaven. Out on the water, storm raging high, waters around. That night, fear gripped their hearts, and they thought they would die, but they. 
that is, to think that God, the creator of everything of heaven and earth, God, when you call his name of everything that's going on in the cosmos, when you call his name, that God said, I love you so much, I'll, la- I'll leave the 99. I'll come where you're at. I don't know about you, but that is an awesome thought that God loved me so much that when I uttered his name, it got his attention. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, little ones, get ready to take up their pen and march. 8.30, prayer breakfast, 8.30 for the ladies. They get ready to take up the pen and march. Don't them little ones look good in their camo? Praise the Lord. Sister Hutto, why don't you play something while them babies take up their penny march? Tell that other neighbor how glad you are to see them in the house of the Lord. It feels so good. It feels so good to be free. I've been born again, free from sin.
this time we're going to let the Sunday school teachers take their classes. They're going to ease out. Watch them ease out. Some of the finest young people you'll come across anywhere. Love and appreciate them so much. Again, it is so good to have all of our guests this morning. Amen. Every one of our guests is special, but there are some that I want to recognize, and I don't have time to recognize them all, but my father-in-law and my mother-in-law and my nephew are in the house, and I want to say how good it is to have them. This is the man that I was talking about in the service Wednesday night. Y'all don't tell him what I said about him. Exodus 12, you have your Bibles. Good to see Brother and Sister Cross been off working, been missing them. Good to see them back in the house of the Lord. Amen. You shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that's in the basin, and strike the lintel, the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. My title this morning, if you'll help me, do you have your camouflage on? Why don't you turn around and look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have your camouflage on? Praise the Lord. Some of you got on wood camouflage in the forest. Some of you got on Walmart camouflage, but it'll work. You can be seated. Before I get to the text this morning, I want you to understand that God sees everything. God sees all. Nothing is hid from his eyes. We know and study in the word of God, he's omnipresent, he's everywhere at all times. We know that he's omniscient, he knows all. We know he's omnipotent, he has all power. He's everywhere at all times. He sees all, knows all, understands all. Nothing is out of his reach. Nothing is hid from him. He is an all-powerful God. He is, the Bible calls him, the Almighty God. If there's one description about God that lets you know there's only one, it's that one ought to be. There can't be but one Almighty. If there be another God, he ain't got no might. Because Revelation 1 and 8 says Jesus is the Almighty God. He got it all. Well, that's another message. He sees all. Jeremiah 16 and 17, he said, For my eyes are upon all of their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. God sees all. Jeremiah 23 said, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord? David went in depth about that in Psalms 139 and 7. David said, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. David was said, I don't care where you go. You can go as far in the ocean you want to. God sees you. He's there. You can climb to the highest mountain. God sees you. He's there. You can crawl down in the deepest cave and God sees you. He's there. Don't ever let hell try to lie to you and tell you that you're insignificant and that you're a nobody, that you're unvaluable to God. I want you to know God loves you and God has his eye on you. The Bible said he knows the very number of hair on your head. If you comb your hair in this morning and lost three and overnight two grew back, God did the appropriate math. He knows how many hair is on you. That's how much God thinks about you. I told you, God loves you. If he has a refrigerator, it's got your picture on it. If God packs a wallet, it's got your picture in it. 
God loves you so much. He said he engraved you on the palm of his hands. God said, that's how much I love you. I don't ever want to forget. You're extremely valuable to God. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. I'm telling you with all your hang-ups, hold-ups, and mess-ups. God loves you. Scripture said he loved us while we were yet in our sins. He sees you. His eyes are on you. The Bible teaches us he sees every sparrow that falls. You're much more valuable than many, many sparrows. God has invested in creation. He's invested in us. He didn't create and walk away. He's invested in creation. He has his hands on the affairs of men. The Bible tells us in Daniel 20, 21, he changes the times and season. He removes kings, set up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge unto them that have understanding. God is the one that raises up and tears down. Now, no matter what your feelings about the last election, and I didn't like the way it went, but we would be a fool to think that if God didn't want Joe Biden in the White House, he wouldn't be there. I need popular preaching in a lot of uh, Christian realms, but I'm telling you, God raises up kings. God sets down kings. God establishes it. Why would God? God has a plan. I may not like the man's policy, but God has a plan. Psalm 75, David said he brings one down and exalts another. I'm trying to tell somebody, you can hide from me. You can hide from your family. You can hide from your neighbor. You can even try to hide from yourself, but you can't hide from God. God sees you. He knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. And if you've given your life to him, he said, no matter what you're going through, I'll work all things together for the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. But if you haven't made that choice to live for Jesus, can I tell you this morning that Jesus loves you and that's why you're here. You're not here to help somebody win a contest. You're here because God's been reaching for you. And it was God that tugged on your heart and said, you know what? You might ought to go to church this morning. That's why you're here. Because God is reaching for you. Not willing that any perish, but that all should come unto repentance. And we could go on and on about that. But I need you to understand he sees you. He's highly invested in you. He sees all. He knows all. But though we can't hide from God, we do a good job sometimes of hiding from one another. A lot of times our attitudes, our airs we put on, it's just, it's a facade. I've met people, matter of fact, there was, that was, that was one lady that years ago that we, that we that in the church, even today, that prayed through. That first time that lady come to church with her family, I'm telling you, she couldn't have painted a picture and stuck it to her chest any more clear than what you could see it. It was, leave me alone. Don't you mess with me. Don't you dare come back here and pray for me. It was one of them. I mean, the only way she could have made it more visible if you looked at her, she just went. It was, it was visible. But it was a facade. So what we kept doing is we just kept loving her. We would be nice to her and she'd give you them little short answers. How you doing? Aight. Good to see you. You know, just Going out of her way, rude, having an attitude. But God saw beyond her camouflage. And we just kept loving on her. Just kept loving on her. Until one day she decided, you know what, I'm taking this camo off. I'm tired of being this way. She went to an altar, repented of her sins, got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sins, and God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in a brand new tongue. God changed her on the outside, on the inside. She's a sweet, sweet lady even today. We try to hide ourselves. You see it a lot of times in the young people. I mean, they get all these weird hairstyles and weird colors and all this, you know, they all this weird dress stuff. I mean, they just dress crazy, and I, I ain't throwing rocks at nobody. I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, if you'd be honest, you know, nowadays you can't preach truth because people are like, you're judging. Amen. No, I'm not judging. I'm just telling you facts. You know, the fact is they ain't trying to be different. They kind of camo up. I remember one time that there was, there was a, a, a preacher that's going on to be with the Lord, and uh, Brother... Paul in law, Brother Austin Sanders, he could tell you about him. Brother Rod Gordon was a good, dear friend of ours. Brother Rod Gordon was telling me a story about a young man. 
He said he was he was the roughest. Didn't nobody want to be around that boy? Didn't nobody, his family didn't want him. Nobody he go to grandpa. They didn't want him. He go. They didn't want him. He was mean. He was rough. He stayed in trouble. He fought all the time. He had a filthy mouth. He come out, Brother Rod Gordon. Brother Rod Gordon said, I just reached him, throwed my arms around him, and just bear hugged. He said he went to fight. He's trying to get He said, I just held on. He's fighting and let me go. And he just said, I just held on to him. He said, I just can't. He said, directly, he quit fighting. And he said, I felt him shaking. And he started crying. And he said, your camouflage didn't fool the man of God. And I said, your camouflage didn't fool the man of God. The man of God looked at him and said, I saw you. That's the way God, you can camouflage all you want to, paint it up tattoo it up, color it up but God said I see you're broken and you're hurting on the inside and I love you just like you are I love you enough to wrap my arms around you I love you enough, you're not going to fight me off oh God sees all he sees that broken hurting heart he loves us in spite of all that we're doing he's looking on the inside I didn't really come to preach on that this morning. I, we're going to touch on that maybe a little more. But, but on this camouflage, Sonny, I'm going to talk about this camouflage. Turn to your neighbor one more time ask him, do you have your camouflage on? Camouflage, by definition, according to Mr. Google, camouflage is called cryptic coloration. It's a mechanism we use to hide or deceive. Camouflage allows prey to avoid predators. But it also allows predators to sneak up on prey. Prey uses camouflage to hide, to survive. Predators use it to get close to the prey so they can get a meal. That's the way the animal kingdom works. The camouflage of blending in is a survival mechanism for the prey and the predator. There are very few animals that don't use camouflage. The only animals that don't use camouflage are out of reach of are predators usually that are out of reach of any other kind of predator. They said birds of prey, hawks and eagles don't use camouflage because they're above all anything. They'll get them. They just fly down what they need and go get back in the cliffs and the rocks and high trees or whatever and, and, and nothing's bothering them. And then there are a lot of frogs that are bright colored and they're not camouflaged up. They just throw out their colors everywhere and let you know. But they got something on the inside of them that's oozing on the outside of them. It's a poison that everything knows. Don't mess with that. I didn't come to preach on that. It ain't in my notes, but I'd read it this week and it's still on my mind. Amen. Can I tell you, you can get something on the inside of you that ooze out on the outside of you that the enemy knows I can mess with everybody but I better not mess with that one that one knows how to pray that one knows how to tell on me that's another message and I told my wife yesterday we had to run to Alexander and pick up some stuff for today and uh, me and I was talking about it and, and mentioned ever so often She'll ask me, you know, especially if I go somewhere with her on Saturdays, because Saturday's usually my day spending time with the Lord. And, and so Mama gets nervous sometimes, and she says, you got, you got your message ready? And uh, so yesterday's one of those days I made her nervous. I said, kind of. That don't sound good. You want me to turn around? You stay home, I'll go. I said, no, no, it's going to be all right. I said, it's camouflage, son, and I really want to preach on camouflage. And I, I, I kind of feel like where I'm going, but, but I don't know. I've been researching a lot of stuff about animals. And, uh, but the more I researched and I started finding some scripture, you see, camouflage is not some new man-made technology. Tree bark and primos and, and mossy oak didn't invent this. You find camo even in the Word of God. Jesus talked about it. He said that, that you gotta, you got to beware of false prophets. He said they come, they're, they're wolves, but they come in sheep's clothing. They come out up, and, and, and if you're not careful, they're they going to slip in where you're at, and, and, and they're going to get you. Uh, but how are you going how are you going to find out who they are, Lord, if they look like a sheep, and they smell like a sheep, and they feel like a sheep? How am I going to tell what's a sheep? You're going to look down and up two things. Number one, at its tracks. You're going to know it by its walk. And number two, you're going to know it by its sound, because the wolf don't sound like a sheep. Let me tell you, there are false prophets. They're going to look like Christians. They're going to feel like Christians. They're going to smell like Christians. They might even try to mimic some of the walk of the Christians. 
But he said, you better watch that sound. Paul said that if I or an angel from heaven come preaching any other gospel than this, let them be accursed. What is the gospel? It's the death, the burial, the resurrection. It's repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's Acts 2.38. Paul said, if anybody comes preaching any other gospel than this, that's in the book, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to tell you right now, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. That Bible is filled with one, 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 one. The Bible never said there were multiple roads that led to heaven. He said that was straight is the way, narrow is the gate. There's one way, one way that leads to heaven. Amen. It's baptized in Jesus' name. I'm trying to preach to somebody right now that Jesus said, I'm warning you, there's camouflage out there. He even told us that Satan used camouflage. He said that Satan, I mean, there's nobody in here when you think about Satan, thinks about somebody pretty. Something beautiful. And that's the reason why we miss him. Because the Bible said he would present himself as an angel of light. Satan will always come as looking, looking right, looking bright, looking good. Scripture tells us he'd be so good at his camouflage that in the end time that many would call good evil and evil good. We're seeing it. We're seeing it in 2023. You preach against homosexuality and LGBTQ, WXYZ, and whatever else they are, amen, and they'll call you're evil, you're, you're a bigot, you're this, you're racy, all that. They just throw out all these things, and they're calling good, evil, and evil, good. But God said it's abomination. I know that ain't popular preaching. I know that, that a lot of people don't like it in 2023 because they're cam they can't see beyond the camouflage. It may look like love. It may smell like love. It may feel like love. But you listen to the message and you look at the tracks. It ain't love. It's perversion. Calm down, Pastor. We got visitors here. Okay. Praise God. Scripture tells us that there were some that would look at the sheep. They'd be they call good evil. They convince it's not a wolf, it's a sheep. It's it's of Christ. But it's not. I could spend all morning talking about the camouflage of the deceivers. But what I really want to preach about today is our camouflage. Because all of their camouflage is flawed. It can be defeated. I just told you a simple way how to defeat it. Because all camouflage that man comes in can be defeated. You got your camouflage on today. You're looking like leaves and trees and sticks and whatnot. You got all the fall colors. But if you've ever turkey hunted or deer hunted, you've got testimonies and stories where you got busted. To all you non-hunters, that means you, you got seen. That that old doe, when she starts doing that right there, with that front foot, and you start hearing that, whew, this old hunt's over with. You might well, I know every hunter here, we just think, oh, she'll leave, it'll calm down. And you might well get up and go, it's over with. It's over. I've been busted. I was setting up and Brother Pennington had carried me on a trip to Kentucky. And I'm sitting up there and I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm comfortable. Got my crossbow up in my climbing stand. And I heard some turkeys. I've been listening to them. Boy, they sounded so pretty. And uh, them turkeys come right up there. And uh, I didn't even know that they were legal to shoot up there with the lights. I thought it was like Louisiana's spring thing. But up there in deer season, you shoot turkeys. And it was legal. I could have shot. I don't think I could have got it for the simple fact that I'm just looking. And so I said, man, that's pretty. Let me get my phone. And when I got my phone and I done, I mean, I, didn't, I just barely moved. They, it, it, was, it was like I'd shot at them. I was camoed up, but my camo got defeated. Whether it be a change of wind whether it be a slight movement, it makes camo obsolete. But I want to talk to you about a camo that's undefeatable and undetectable. In our text, the instruction went out. The Lord said, the death angel's coming. I'm bringing him with me. Here's what you've got to tell the people do, Moses. Tell them go out and get a lamb without spot, without blemish. Get that lamb, bring it back, pin it up 14 days, feed it, take care of it, get ready. Amen, kill the lamb. Put the blood on his, put it above the doorpost. Take the lamb on the inside, eat it, 
Get your staff in your hand, your sandals on your feet, your robe on your back. Get ready to go. There's a death angel coming. I charge that destroyer to kill every firstborn. And so with that charge from God, that death angel came that night. And that death angel wiped out all the firstborn just like God told him to do. Except there was a lot of firstborns that lived. He didn't disobey God. There were a lot of firstborns that walked out there door that morning alive. Though there were thousands died. There was a lot of firstborns that lived. It wasn't that the death angel was disobedient. The death angel killed all the firstborns he saw. But some were camouflaged beneath the blood. And he couldn't see what had their camo on. Underneath the blood. If he could have saw them, he would have got them. But he couldn't see them because they had their camo on. I come to preach this morning. Do you have your camouflage on? Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, God has a plan. I know it sounded scary when I told you God said, I'm bringing the death angel. But even though God sent the death angel amongst even where his people live, God had a plan. There's a lot of people that have read the back of the book and they're worried. Oh, my God, Brother Hutto, what are we going to do when the mark of the beast comes? What are we going to do when the revelation of John unfolds? What are we going to do in the end times when the persecutions and the trials of the tribulation and you can't buy and you can't sell? What are we going to do when we don't have no? Let me tell you something. God has a plan. God God did not deliver you and fill you and turn your life around to abandon you in the end. But God will be with He's not just the beginning, but He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He ain't going to be with you just in the beginning and walk away and forget you in the end. I don't know if He's going to rain manna from heaven. I don't know if He's going to blow quail in with His breath, with the east wind. I don't know how God's going to take care of us, but God's got a plan. I told y'all that story, but we got a lot of new ones here, and I, and I like telling it, so I'll share it again. But, but I was out on that tractor years and years ago, and I'm shredding stalks after we had picked the cotton, and we're getting ready for the end of the year, and I'm shredding stalks. And, and uh, there were certain fields that we could go on that we could carry a gun with us, and it was, it was in October. It was legal, and, and uh, I'd jump off the tractor, and I'd shoot them rabbits, and me and Mama eat them good groceries. But this particular day, we were on the Delta, and we were over there near the airport, and, 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 and we couldn't have a gun on on Delta, you know, and, and so I'm in there, and I'm shredding, and these rabbits was going everywhere. And so when you spend before daylight to way after dark on a tractor, 16 hours on a tractor, you got a lot of time on your hands. And this, is, this is before cell phones, and so I had a lot of time on my hands, and so I had been spending some of that time in prayer like every day, and man, I had just been praying that day talking with God, done had my shout down fit in there, you know, weeping and crying, praising God, telling him how good he was, and just worshiping God, and I'd like to calm down and just sitting there praying, and all of a sudden, one of them big rabbits cut out running, and so I just casually said, Lord, I sure wish I had one of them rabbits for supper. I turned around, and I'm coming back on the next row, and I looked up, and I seen this big chicken hawk. He dove, Whew. and I'm thinking, what's that chicken hawk doing right ahead of me up there? And so I kept shredding sh stalk, and I'm trying to look, and when I got close, this big old cane cutter, big old rabbit, he had hit him behind the head, and I stopped the tractor, and I jumped off, and I started heading toward him, and he was, trying, he was too big, couldn't fly off with it, and he's trying to fly off, and finally, I'm getting too close, and he just left him and run off, and there's that big cane cutter still kicking. I picked him up. Popped him behind the head, finished it, whipped out the old barn low, slung the guts out, opened up my lunchbox, throwed him in the lunchbox where they got the little, little thing that keeps everything cool, put it in there, washed my hands with my water, shut the door, got everything going, and I'm driving down the road, and it hit me. And I got tickled. I said, Lord, if you can feed Elijah with a raven, I guess you can feed a hunter with a chicken hawk. I don't know how God's going to do it. But I'm telling you, God has a plan. Just stay with the camouflage and let God take care of you. But that death angel was loose. God had a plan. 
And there underneath the blood, all he saw was the blood. And he could not get them because of the blood. I'm preaching to you, have your camouflage on. Galatians 3 and 27 says, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. When you get baptized in Jesus Christ, he said you're putting on something. I'm preaching to you, have your camouflage on. Oh, have you been covered by the blood? Reminds me of Psalms 85 and 2 said, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Selah. I want you to know there's an enemy out there that would love to get his hands on you, church. There's an enemy out there that's roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He's a predator. He wants you. He wants your family. He wants to destroy you. He wants to find you and devour you and wipe you out. But when you went down in Jesus' name and the blood was applied to your life, though that enemy wants you, he's roaming to and fro. He's looking for you. He's seeking whom he may devour. And he would get you if he could see you. But you're camoed up. He can't see through the blood. When you go down in Jesus' name, baptism, the scripture let us know the blood of Jesus is applied. It's the only place the Bible let us know the blood of Jesus is applied in Jesus' name baptism. When you've got that blood covering your life, he can't see you. He just sees the blood. He'd love to get his hands on you. But Colossians 3 and 3 said you are dead and your life is hid in Christ in God, with Christ in God. He said, I'd love to get him. I'd love to get him, but all I find is that, that old dead man they killed at the altar. He's dead. I can't do nothing with him. All the rest of them, their life, they've come out up. They're hid in God. I can't get them. I'm preaching about it's an undefeated camouflage. The enemy looked right at you and didn't see you. All he saw was the blood. I'm preaching to somebody, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It's under the blood. The sin that I committed, the blood got that. The iniquity in my past, the blood covered that too. The mistakes, the failures, the bad choices, the wrong turns, the judgment that should have been mine. All I can say is thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. The enemy was hot on my trail. He should have got me, but I was hid. Under the blood. We talked about it the other night, about the day of atonement in the Old Testament. Y'all remember me telling about that? They take the lamb, sacrifice him at the altar, take the blood. It's time for the day of atonement. The priest takes the blood. He goes in, has the century, goes in first, puts the century in there, gets it going. Get that praise, illuminating that most holy place. He goes out and he gets the blood. He comes back, and when he goes in with the blood, the scripture said he sprinkles the blood on that mercy seat. The blood is what activates the mercy. Now, this is, I told you, this is imperfect man standing before perfect God. It's a day of atonement. They've got to stand before and against the law. The law is perfect. The law is screaming and demanding justice. And no matter how hard man tried, he couldn't meet up to what the law is requiring. There's no way he could match it. He couldn't get it. There's no way. He falls short. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter what we do, we can't get there. The law is perfect, it's beyond us. And man has got to stand before that and be judged by that. If it were not for what happened with the blood, there would have been only one day of atonement and everybody would have died that day. But when the blood was sprinkled, I told you, God didn't get up from the mercy seat. And uh, uh, the ark and take the mercy seat off the box and reach in and get the law and issue out judgment. But the Bible said that he was the God that dwelleth between the cherubims. He sat on the mercy seat. God named it the mercy seat. And sitting on the mercy seat, imperfect man comes before God needing judgment. And God still sitting on the mercy seat, reached through the blood and a seat called mercy and got a hold of the law and drug 
drug it through mercy and the blood. And when he issued it out, it's dripping with mercy. It's dripping with the blood. And Lamentation said, it is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. My sin should have wiped me out. But the camouflage, the undefeated camouflage, Here's the thing about the blood. Even though I spent the whole beginning of this message telling you that God sees all, God chooses not to see beyond the blood. It's a camo that God can't even defeat. And this is powerful. For, I said it's a camouflage that God chooses not to defeat. When your past gets under the blood, God said, I won't even remember it anymore. It's over with. Some of you won't pray or won't do for God because all you can think about is your past and you think I'm not worthy. I'm telling you what you're worried about. God don't even remember. God don't even know about. All he sees is a brand new creature in Christ. You use any camo you want in the world, it won't work. Adam and Eve taught us that. You take all the sticks and fig leaves you want. You can't hide. Nothing on the planet works like the blood. I'm going to get ahead of myself, but when judgment comes a-calling, you better pray you got camouflage, y'all. You got the blood applied. Can I get serious for just a second, folks? This eternity stuff, it's no fairy tale. It's real. Eternity is just around the corner. Don't take my word for it. You read that Bible. We're, 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 we're there. I don't know when he's coming, but we're there. Eternity is coming quickly, quickly upon us. We sing all the time, what can wash away my sin? We know the blood washes away sin. Here's my question. But what removes the blood? Because if the enemy can get the camo off of you, he can't defeat that. But if he can get the blood off of you, he's got you. So what, what does the scripture say washes away the blood? What makes the invisible visible again? What can defeat the undefeatable camouflage? 1 Kings 21 and 20, Ahab said to Elijah, Has thou found me, O mine enemy? Just leave that scripture up, guys. Time out, time out, time out. What are you talking about, Ahab? You're the king of Israel. You're the most visible man in the whole world. You couldn't hide if you wanted to. You're living in the palace wearing the kingly garments. Everywhere you are, there's servants. You got a camaraderie of folks all around you. What do you mean, has, you, has thou found me? You're visible. Here's what he meant. Because when he was anointed by the prophet to be king, Chosen as God's man, there was a camouflage put on him that can't nobody touch. He's invincible. He's anointed by God. So he's shocked. He is shocked that he's been found. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see me? Hide, hide. Not, no, no. I, I, I'm anointed. I got, I got him a cap. How'd you find me? Here's how I found you, sir. Because you sold yourself to work evil. Here's what washes the blood away. When you start working sin and iniquity in your life, when you willingly start walking away from the things of God, you remove yourself from the anointing and the covering of God. There's a story in the Bible, and I'm hurrying to a close. Sister, I told you to walk real slow. Matthew 18, verse 23, I don't have time to read it all. There's a man, he comes in. The scripture says he owed 10,000 talents. I tell your neighbor, that's a lot of money. He owed millions, millions. He goes in and the king says, arrest him. Arrest his whole family. Put him in prison till he can pay it back. He fell on his knees and the Bible said he worshipped. He worshipped that king. He said, Please, king, you're a good king, you're a just king, please be patient. 
please have mercy. Please give me a chance. The king said, because you love me, because I see your heart was after me. He said, uh, guys, come here. He said, wipe the debt out. It ain't patient till he can pay. It's over with. Wipe it out. It's clean. It's gone. Clean the slate. He's forgiven. He's covered. Scripture says that he walked out. And he's walking down the street. And he walks upon a man who owed him two pence. The guy don't even, he, he don't even owe him a penny. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing. And when he reached around, come here, help me. He, he reached and grabbed him. And the Bible said he yanked him and slammed him against him. Give me what you owe me. And the same thing happened. The guy falls to his knees and said, please, sir. Please be patient with me. Please give me another, just a little, just a little longer. I'll pray it, I promise. Please. He said, no, I've had enough. Guards, take him away. Put him into prison. And prison is fair until he can pay that I owe. The guards saw it. They're involved, and the guards went back to the king. Said, King, we got a story to tell you. Our heart's broken. But you know the guy that was just in here begging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they told him the story. The king in his wrath said, go get that man and you bring him back here. And they brought him back. The man who was covered, the king said, all of that debt is reinstated. Sir, I ain't going to just cast you to prison. He said, you're going to be cast to the tormentors until you can pay what you owe me. You will spend the rest. That man couldn't forgive, and his unforgiveness washed the blood off of him. I'm asking, do you have your camouflage on? Do you have your camouflage on? I'm not the type of preacher that will stand up here trying to scare you to live for God. I'm not. I am a messenger to tell you about the truth. But I also want you to know there's great benefits in living for God. There's consequences if you don't. But I want to tell you about the goodness if you do. I'll tell you. I won't lie. I'll tell you the hounds of hell are after you. But I'd rather tell you that the blood can cover you. It's an undefeated camouflage that the enemy would love to wipe you out. If you put this on, I will, I'm, I'm hurrying. There's going to be times you're going to think, Brother Hutto lied to me. He lied to me. He told me I put on this camouflage, I'd be undefeated. And here I am. I'm Joseph. I'm in a prison. He lied to me. If I got camouflage on, then why am I going through? Because God had a plan. Hold on, Joseph. Don't pull the camo off. Because there's going to be a day the king's going to put his coat on you. The key to the corn crib in your hand, the scepter in the other hand. You're going to save the whole nation of Israel. God had a plan. I'm telling you, child of God, even when things don't look good, it's working for your good. I'm telling you, keep, keep yourself under the blood. I'm finished. You're, you stand. I come in passion to preach to you today to tell you the blood is available. The camouflage is free. It's available this morning. All we'd have to do is repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Seek God and let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. The camouflage store begins at an altar. Only the blood can cover. It's the only legal liquid to wash away sin. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, 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 I'll close with this. Satan is after you. The book is clear. The powers of darkness, the prince, palaces of this world, they're after you. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you camouflaged? Do you have your camouflage on? Do you want to escape wrath when the trumpet sounds? Sister Hutto is getting ready to play. I want you to reach over and get your neighbor by the hand. I know there's stuff waiting outdoor, but we got time. We got time to find a place to pray. 
these altars are open. Somebody can leave here with their life changed this morning. Somebody can leave here full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody can leave here with joy on the inside, with Jesus on the inside. Somebody can leave here this morning covered by the blood of Jesus. Come on, Sister Hutto, why don't you sing? Come on, why don't you pray for a neighbor? Reach over and get your neighbor by the hand. They won't mind. Pray with them this morning. Yes. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is softly calling. But because of who he is and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start. That's it. Find somebody to pray with. Come on, we're not in a hurry. Why don't you go hug somebody? Wrap your arms around them. Let them know you love them. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Come on, just go wrap your arms around somebody. Let the Holy Ghost use you to encourage somebody. If you're here this morning, you're tired of getting busted by the enemy. Why don't you put the camo on? Come on, put on Jesus this morning. Hallelujah! But because of who he is And because of where he's been Because of what he's done You can start all over again In the name of Jesus In the name of the Lord Jesus. Open your heart to Jesus. He sees. He sees. He knows. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, church. Pray with somebody. In the name of Jesus. Come on, that's it. God knows. In the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Urania, be sure to tell all our guests how much we enjoyed having them. Go out, get you something to eat. They set up tables and chairs. Find you a place to sit down, fellowship, hang around a while. It, it may or may not be sprinkling outside, but it'll be all right. We'll dry off. Turn around, find somebody, point at them, tell them, hey, I sure do love you.